Nice. What's up, Sim Racers? Larry TJR Sim here. So I got this new Stream Deck Plus in here, and I gotta say, it is a really useful tool to use for as a button box, obviously for sim racing, but also just some productivity as well. So yeah, I'm really digging it. Let's jump into it, see what I found so far. Alrighty, so let's check out this Stream Deck Plus I got here. So it's essentially a button box, right? And so the reason I got one of these is because I am reviewing more wheels, of course, that I'm buying myself, uh, just out of my own curiosity and share with y'all. But uh, right, being that I'll switch out from say, my Anki Force, which I had a built-in button box for it from DSD buttons that I use, and I made my own custom holder and then stuck it in there. I don't really have room for that across my whole dash here. So I just wanted something small that took the place of that button box and allowed me to be able to switch out all the different wheels that I want to go to and try out like Moza's. And right now I'm doing the Sim Magic, Ace of Tech, Demi Cube and all those until I decide what I really want to use as a long-term plan. And then I didn't also want to mount up button boxes to where I have my hand brakes on the right as well because you know, I have my other gear that I'm putting there. So this made the most sense. Something that I had endless amount of buttons to, to place in here and uh, any game that I want. Now, most steering wheels nowadays, like the G GT Neo, has so many buttons and dials on there and coders that you can use that you really don't need a lot of functions on these button boxes. But I do run into some that I need. But I'll just talk about what I got going on here. So. Uh, f first screen that comes up here is, is these apps, links, tutorials. That's default on there. And then I added these other ones and I don't have anything right here for now. Uh, and then they have like undo, redo, system volume here, brightness of this display here that you can see going up and down. And then this is just a swipe left. It really doesn't do anything uh, at this point. So uh, I need two different things that I'll use this for. Actually, this one's good for uh, undoing and redoing some commands that you just did uh, live on Windows is what I noticed it was for. But I'll find more and more things to use these for, I'm sure. But these are actually clickable buttons uh, to do a command. You can also tap the screen to do the same thing, but you can multi-layer these buttons to do something. So for instance, you could have a different screen here going on, say this button here, and you push it in to activate your center, your seat, or I'm sorry, you push it in to, let's say you have a dial to increase your traction control, decrease your traction, turn your traction control off, something like that, right? Same with ABS, you can do your you know, brake bias and all that. So you have four dials here that you could use, so it's multi-switches, right? And you can stack these commands on there, which is pretty cool, but, how I'm using it right now, and I'm sure this is gonna change as I go along, as I learn more about using this, but just thought it was really cool tech to share with you. And I know it's been out, and a lot of people use this for streamers. Streamers use these a lot uh, to control their streams and stuff, and I, I don't really stream, but I like it for a button box. So first screen here, I'm using apps. Oh, and then you see these little GIFs that are in these apps. You, they have free stuff on the El Gallardo website that you can download a lot of these pre-made GIFs uh, for your buttons. They got plugins and stuff, uh, all kinds of things you can download, uh, different icon packs, a lot of specific sim racing icon packs. So if you saw some videos back in the day, I think Chris Hayes did his own icon pack that was pretty popular as far as people would use for like racing and all them. And I had, at that time, I had a reg regular physical DSD buttons, uh, button boxes with a, my own setup. So I didn't really have a need for it, but I've come, along, uh, come a long ways now with something not so big that don't take up so much space on your rig, but you have endless amount of features, right? So using apps, I just use this one for productivity, sticky notes, dig into my folders, you know, launch a folder there. See, there we go. I got my folder here up that I can launch and, and see and then go to my videos that I'm editing or whatever. Show desktop, I can just go straight to show desktop like you're in a, in a, 
and again, screenshots so I can do a screenshot of that and then I'll have this file off to the side, right? Uh, so these are just handy buttons to launch my, uh, my uh, Outlook, do the uh, calculator. I can pull up the calculator and, and play with it when I want, want to instead of going to my desk and, and getting out for my getting my engineering calculator right so just some quick stuff but these are just handy right you can actually set every and then I have this little cool little animated back button basically that you can do to go back because once you're in an app say apps here once you're in a certain folder if you swipe left or right you just go to the next next slide deck here you see this one two and three right here I can add another one have four so nothing assigned to this right now but you can assign things by dragging over say website right here and i want to put in i don't know tjrsim.com or whatever right and put in your own website there and launch that one so then when you come over here and just click this button it launches to it now since i don't have nothing assigned it just gives you that that symbol for now but if you decide you don't want something you can just delete it no big deal and then you decide you don't want a page you can right click on that and delete that page as well and say yep delete and then you're back to three pages. So it's just so intuitive and, and easy to use, but it, there is actually quite a bit of learning curve to, to mess around with this. If you're not very PC adapt, this, there's a little bit of a, a steeper learning curve, but once you try it once, you can literally start copying and pasting and then changing commands as you go. But just to dig in deeper here, in links, I use links for something you know, most Hot links that I use the most. Here's my site here, uh, as far as the uh, for my uh, affiliate stuff right here, and then all my social networks and stuff here as well. So, and then YouTube, Twitter, blah, right? Uh, Amazon, I go buy stuff there a lot. <laughs> so, and then here's this little nifty one here. This launches the Elgato Steam Steam Store here, Stream Stream Deck Store. Sorry, can't talk. But uh, I have all these little uh, ones here that you can download plugins and different OBS plugins, Discord, volume control, control center. It goes on and on and on. Show more and just keep going, right? Uh, and then uh, go back to Stream Deck and do different icons. So you can download specific icons. You can do, say, like Sim here and go Sim Racing. And then here's specific to Sim Racing ones here as well that's already in here, which is cool. This lovely sim racing icons is, is a really good one, which I have downloaded, but you get the idea, right? You can do all kinds of things, even mu even audio. You have different music in here as well. Free actual music that you can put in your videos if you want it to. They do ask that, that it, it's royalty free basically, so you could use it, but it's best to add, and let me see your, your uh, profiles here to add your like my track your own account right which is just a web page goes to your account but just so they don't white flag you if you're using some royalty music there but really nice intuitive stuff right so but yeah it's pretty much it there and then tutorials when you're trying to learn some things here you can go click up tutorials and then it'll launch the tutorials and and literally the videos within the tutorials right pretty cool now, I use this one, of course, for deck, which pulls up this screen here because I've been using it so much. I might as well map a button to it instead of going to the bottom screen down here and, and clicking it or down here and clicking it, right? Uh, headphones. This is probably my most favorite feature. You can assign your speakers for your PC and then your, and then your headphones, right? And switch back and forth with a click a button. I often forget to switch from my, my desktop speakers to my headphones all the time and uh, when I jump in a game. So I just literally click this button, switch it over, and then boom, you're done. So I, I could just live with one little glowing button over here. That's all it did. And I would have been happy for like 20 bucks worth of buying a button and then maybe have a dial for the volume, right? <laughs> that would have that made me totally happy and I would have bought that in, in seconds. But with this, but with this, you can do, it's almost endless things here. So you can even, change your backgrounds here. Each button is selectable. You can see how it highlights up here at the top as well. There, as you push on here, it does something as well. But it's uh, pretty damn cool. So let's go dive a little bit deeper what I actually use this for as well. So there's things called profiles. And uh, what you can do, you can do it a couple different ways is what I've learned is you can just swipe this to the next page, page one, two, three, four, five, whatever, however many pages, you can just go over here and click add another page, add another page, add another page. And I basically have all these blank pages, right? So there's a page, page four is nothing, page five, nothing, six, nothing. 
If I don't want them, of course, then I can just right click and delete those pages, right? I, th I think I just covered this for you. <laughs> but uh, there, so I'm back to what I want uh, here. This is uh, stuff I was gonna use for the groovy uh, lights that I have on my rig that you can adjust in. And uh, this is a plugin actually that you just download from that site and set everything up as far as that goes. And you got all these little commands here that you can use to drop in uh, hot keys. I can use this as a hot key. Literally, this is a hot key. Whatever key you program on in a game to use. Set, of course, the competition makes a uh, has its own little letters and numbers next to commands within the game. So, like brake bias and your traction control, ABS, engine mapping, and all that stuff. So, stuff that you may not cover on, say, a a wheel itself. So I'm using the GT Neo wheel, it has a ton of buttons on there, but there are some features, on, there are some buttons I run out of that I don't have. And so this is where you can actually use that, right? So I'm sure y'all have seen this a lot already in the past, but so I won't dive too deep in that, but I just think it's pretty damn cool. But what I use here for this this front face here is just to swipe and, and open up programs I normally just go to and use as a work, a work thing, right? Work as far as doing videos and stuff. But this this one here is a switcher, and so you can switch to your different profiles. So up here, when I click on this button, you see where it has profiles. So I have MS2, ACC, EAWRC, and you just name them whatever you want, and then default profile. And you can make each one, um, make whatever you want as a default. So if I come over here to profiles, I click on that one, I can click this little box, oops, in the way, click this little box to make this my default profile. And so every time you map a button over here to go home, you can go to that profile. So for instance, let's see, I'll go into here. I have a home button I map. So I go there and it goes all the way back to my default profile. So whatever you want to, whatever you can think of, you can do on this thing. So you don't have to use your mouse so much to go open programs and looking for screens to use, uh, to move things around on. So it's really randy setup. So I don't know, as you can tell, I'm digging it, but Anyway, MS2, as you can see, you got all these custom icons that you can download as well. Uh, so if I click on this one here and hit the plus button, there's these icon packs like I was showing you already. And see, so here's these animated ones. But one that's really good is this lovely sim racing icon one here. And this is where you have a lot of preset icons that you can use like Chief, ACC, ACC, AMS2 and stuff. And what I notice is that when you map uh, set game to this. So if I was to map a game to this particular one, like AMS2, it'll actually pull the image in from the game itself. Uh, but if you do something where they call multi-switch on here, or what they call multi-switch is this one right here, multi-action, I can drag this over here and create a multi-action. It just pulls up another screen, which allows you to drag in more things to do multi actions at one time so i, I kind of sure i can go do open and they recommend that you put like a little delay right so this one i would go down here and assign a folder to open up a specific game and then you know application of that game and it would be set and then delay or delay it give it enough time for windows to launch that game right so it's like a, a second delay and then I could say, for instance, I can add another one, open it up here. I say, I want to open up my D-Box settings because my D-Box may, like on MS2, for example, will launch the D-Box automatically. I don't have to do something like launch, but I may want to fiddle with the settings. So it'll automatically open up the settings. And then I may want to add Crew Chief. So I'd add a, a delay there to give it a second to then add and open up another program. And now I'd assign this one to Crew Chief down here, right? And so it would, in a, within the app Crew Chief, you can have it automatically run the game when it recognizes the game's launch. So for AMS2, since I would launched it with this particular button here, it'll go through all these setups here uh, that you see on the screen. It'll, you, it'll just step right on through there, all with just one click of a button, which is pretty cool. Uh, and it's, it's, new tech as far as you could use hotkeys on your keyboard and forever, forever in one day. But uh, you got a little button box device to be able to use it. So in other games uh, like AMS2 uh, or say ACC is a good example as well, is you can map, you know, to do whatever. So what I don't do on my wheel is obviously these. I don't set my seat configurations in, which normally I don't even have to mess with this so much because the way I have it uh, set up in the game. I'm, I'm already loaded into my preferred seating position. 
but uh, you can do that uh, for new cars and stuff. Uh, you want to load in and you need to do some adjustments, you can do that. But anyway, that's kind of what it is. Uh, I click here and see this still is just a multi-switch button. So I could come over here and then assign it, say, well, I was going to do this for AMS2 and then I'm done. So now I have the AMS2 logo in there. I know that's just what it is. Of course, here's one as well. But if you didn't do this multi-switch button like I just did, I'll just delete that now. And you came over here, I'll just go to my home. I told you all about the home. And I went to games and I just put a, a pre-launch here. See this AMS2 one is a little bit different logo. This pulled it from the actual game itself, the application itself, and, and loaded its own logo. So you can kind of get a little bit of difference between. Now, not every logo is loaded in here, uh, like I showed you here on this plus sign, right? Uh, for different uh, here, uh, it doesn't have every one on here, but uh, you just simply go to you know, download the uh, game icon like I did for Forza Motorsports. In particular, this one. So Forza Motorsports, I don't really need to sign any kind of button boxes to it, right? Forza Horizon would be good for a button box because there's so many little extra commands that you can sign to do different things like enter into a race and things like this, right? Uh, speak to people or whatever, change your volume. You could set a button to change your volume of the radio in there and so on, right? But Forza Motorsport doesn't really do that. So all I do with this one is I just launch it straight from here. It, then it launches the same thing, the stack tiles or, or that I showed you, the multi-action tiles up here. Um, launches a game. It D-Box doesn't automatically launch with this particular game. It doesn't do it with every game, but some games you have to launch it separately. So it'll go ahead and launch the game, or D-Box rather. It'll launch the D-Box software. Then my rig will you know, up and down and get ready for the game as the game's loading. And then it'll also launch my settings for that as well. So really cool. That's just really cool. I, mean, I love this stuff. So uh, I, I like tech stuff. And then I just put this little animated one as well. But you know, basically, I have games set up here that I don't really need pages for. And uh, if you go do a swipe here, it actually goes back to your default page as well. So that's another way to get back to the default page. But I created basically another folder. So this is a folder but I just uh, put the icon because it's a gaming folder and I dive deeper, right? So then here's some more games, quick launch games that I just programmed in. Now like Le Mans and stuff, there's a ton of actions for folders for that. So uh, I'll go back and create a separate one for that one, R Factor 2 as well and so on, right? F124, Project Cars 2. But this is just kind of what I was with for an example here to just quick launch some things. Dig down a little bit deep, deeper. Um, you know, got different games, even the Xbox app and stuff. And this one, of course, I can use to go backwards as well uh, with it because, like I said, if you swipe, you'll go back to the original default screen. So I had to put a back button in here for this one. And then I can just back back out, right? Or go, go forward again. Or I'm like, I'm too far deep in here. I'm three, three folders deep in here. I'll just click home and go back, or, you know, or whatever you do, right? Or you can just do this and then go back to home as well. So just multiple ways to attack the situation, right? So I'm liking it. Uh, pretty, pretty nifty setup, you can tell. Only cons I've seen so far with this is that sometimes when you put a screensaver on here, uh, it locks this stuff up, I've noticed. And then if you're not in, in another, and all you do to fix it, of course, is just unplug it and plug it back in and it's fine. Or be patient and wait and it'll figure itself out, I guess. But another thing I noticed is if you, it says in the instructions, plug it directly into your PC. But I have a, over there, I have a, a big powered B port, 20 port uh, US. And uh, it, it's usually wrong. You don't have to go straight to the PC. I just use it. But I did have some delay in this as well. So um, yeah, if you have a lot of stuff plugged into a port, you, you're probably going to want to go straight to your PC as well. So anyway, that's just a uh, pretty dang, uh, anyway, that's just a look at what I've got going on here. Uh, if you're interested in some more, just leave some comments or something on there, but there's a ton of videos out there to show you how to do this, but I could do another video kind of showing you a little more in depth of what I'm doing. Now I'm, I'm new at this still, so I'm still learning it, but I thought it was cool to share. So if you like what you see or you want to leave some comments below, please do and uh, share it. And until next time, I'll see you on the track. Thanks for watching. I'm out.